What's up? I'm Colton Lindsay, financially free by the age of 32, and today my team's got lined up some videos I'm going to watch, and you're going to get my live reaction. We're going to start, I don't even know how to say this name, because it's the first time I've heard of him, but I think it's Eamon Godsey. So go ahead, watch in. I'd love to see your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think he has to say? Let's dive in. What were some of your key books that helped you go from zero to 10 million, 15 million a year? The books to go from zero to 50K a year, 100K a year, the books that you read then are slightly different to the books that you read at this yeah, stage of the yeah, journey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the initial sort of books are like Think and Grow Rich, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, this, that. And those are good books to read right now. But at this stage, I don't read those books and get anything from them, quite honestly. And then maybe if you're trying to go from 100K to a million a year, then there's great books like Reality Transurfing, for example. And those books are a little bit more meaty, but there's a lot more that you can kind of learn from there. Look, I don't know about this book he's talking about. Seems like a great book. And I think Think and Grow Rich and... Uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, those are great books to start because they stimulate your mind into how the cash flow system works, how the cash flow quadrant works, how to create the thought and manifest it into reality. I'd be curious to see what this other book is all about. Some of the books that I'm reading right now for the fifth time is called The Power of the Subconscious Mind. I also really love some stuff by Pedra Chondra. I don't even know how to say her last name. One of my favorite books by her that I've been rereading is called Welcoming the Unwelcome. See, everything is a psychological and emotional game. And as I go up to a new phase or a new threshold of control, I have to expand my ability to move through the breakthrough membrane. Because when I am challenged with a new opportunity or new problem to solve, I can either retreat back to the fear or the comfort zone, or I can expand where the freedom zone is. Have you ever noticed how some people work so, so hard, yet they don't seem to get results? And there's some people who it almost looks as if it's effortless for them. It's because the people that work hard and don't yield results, usually it's simply down to the fact that they haven't done the internal work. They don't believe that they're worthy of wealth. And a lot of times they don't believe that there's an abundance of wealth out there. And ladies and gents, this isn't some rah-rah motivational stuff. It really comes down to you attract what you are. And, and if you haven't already, I implore you to look into quantum physics. Try to challenge yourself and read books like Reality Transurfing, which can be quite a heavy hitter. I read that that book when I was 15 and it was life-changing. Look, I completely agree. Our roots determine our fruits, whatever your fruits are with your money. It's what's going on here internally. And it's made up of four things. Our, our emotions, our mind, and our spirituality that develops our fourth thing, which is the physical realm. So if your physical realm isn't the way you want it, you got to do the inner world work. Another great book that I would recommend on top of what he just said is a book called Quantum Warrior. So you can understand how quantum physics works and that you can create the world from the inside out. You can create that abundance that he's talking about. I really like what he has to say. What point do you think that any more money actually makes any difference to you as a person? It doesn't. Mm. None whatsoever. 10K a month is really where your life changes the most by far. 100% agree with that. Like once, yeah, 10K a month is like, man, those are like the most beautiful times ever. You yeah. know, if you can get to like 20, 30, still definitely quite a bit of improvement. Anything above 50,000 a month, it can bring more drawbacks than it can benefits. I don't know. I disagree with them. When I've created more than 50K a month, when I get into 100K a month, 200 grand a month, when I do 250 grand a month, yeah, there's some challenges, but I freaking like life way better flying on a private plane than I do flying coach. I like the ability to expand my portfolio. I do think that your life changes more at that $10 million a year mark than it does, let's say, the $120,000 a year mark or even the $250,000 a year mark like he's talking about. 10K a month is cool. It really, really is, and it'll create a lot of ease in your life. But I want you to consider, what if you had $100,000 a month that just came in residually, and you can absolutely do that, where you set yourself up either for asymmetrical growth, residual cash flow, where it's just consistent money no matter what. Like I took the whole month of June off. I worked only a handful of days, and I still made $110,000. Life is easier when you got 110 grand coming in, whether you show up to work or not. So that's what I want to recommend that you do is I actually disagree with him on this. You know, while everyone else was enjoying themselves playing when, I, you know, they were 14 years old, I was like, okay, I got to start taking shit seriously. So I started reading books and reading another. And, you know, I remember I would wake up before school, 5 a.m. and I'd go for runs and then I'd read and then I'd journal and then I'd meditate. And I kind of built my own schedule and didn't care about school. That's why I picked up books. And it was just those books were the thing that actually led me to that first business. Look, he just discovered this at a young age. If you can get up early, 
early to bed, early to rise makes man healthy, wealthy, and wise, as Benjamin Franklin said. And I love what he said. He dropped the word meditation, the repetitive practice of letting go. So when he's sharing some formulas, he just started at a younger age. I don't care how old you are and don't put the pressure on that your kids have to do it that exact way. People are going to succeed in their own great way. But these behaviors, these patterns he's talking about, get up, meditate, read great books, go on a run, get some cardio in your body, have a think time. These are things that I use today because it creates more clarity in my life. So I agree with what he's talking about. I don't think age matters on this. How did you master your emotions for business? I think when you realize that emotions have no place in business, they really don't. I think ethics and morals have a place in business, but a lot of times ethics and morals have nothing to do with your emotion. So yeah, leave emotion at the door. I disagree with him. I don't care who you are. Emotions are going to be a part of your journey. The better you feel, the better you take action, the better your decisions are. When you grow your business, and maybe this is why he's saying something above ten, twenty thousand dollars a month really doesn't make any adjustments in your life. I think that's false because when you're making more money, you have to make bigger decisions. Bigger decisions require more uncertainty in the decision making process. Knowing to know how many, no matter how many questions you ask, you can't fully eliminate the risk. And so you have to be able to reduce the risk as much as possible and understand there's still be some stupidity tax along the way and you're going to have emotions. I mean, there's shit that's going to come up in your life that maybe not even direct your business. Maybe one of your employee's husband has cancer. Maybe your dog gets sick. And I'm using examples that are real life in my business and I better be able to manage my psychological and emotional state because it's real. The story up here is happening and it's dictating how I feel is dictating how I then make decisions. So my job is to feel good now and always feel better. And when I feel the stress or the overwhelm that come at me in business, I learn to relax through it. What actions define a man? It can be as small as the way you treat a waiter all the way to the way you take care of your mom or your dad. You know, it's very easy for your actions to be honorable when you have everything. So I think put a man in a difficult situation and you'll truly get to see what he's made of. I agree and, agree and disagree. Put a person in a dis difficult situation and you will see what they're really made of. It's gonna turn up the volume on them. And I agree with this idea that he talks about small and simple things is virtually what he's saying here, is these small and simple things, that's where the big things come to pass. But the part that he didn't share, that I think is even more important, that really make a great man or a great woman a great person, is what they do when no one else is watching. What they do when they're by themselves, what story they're thinking about when no one is there to be impressed or to judge them or validate them or give them a sense of acceptance or approval and understanding that real leaders, they don't need validation. They validate themselves. It's in the time at 5 a.m. when no one is there to judge them. It's when they're by themselves that they have a thought process to go through and no one else is there to judge them, but they do the thing that builds them up in that moment. That's what I think really defines a man or a woman. All right, gang, thanks for watching this video. I'd love for you to share in the comments what you thought about today's video. Smash that like button, share it with someone else. You know what, I really think uh, Iman Godzi seems like a really cool person. I don't know much about him. He's obviously got some success going for him. I agree a lot with him and there's some things I just don't agree with. Either way, I'd love to see what your thoughts are. Drop in the comments down below and I'll see you on the next video. Look, I wanna say thanks for watching my video. And I know that this isn't for everyone, but it is for certain people that are ready to make big changes. Like they're ready to create residual revenue. They're ready to become real business owners. They're ready to have a business that makes money even when they're not working. And if that's you, I want you to click the link down in the description and I want to give you an opportunity to have what's called a triage discovery call. We're gonna meet with my head coach and learn where you're stuck in your business and what changes you gotta make so that you don't have to work to make money. I, and I wanna say it again, I know that sounds crazy, but imagine you took time off and you still made money. That doesn't mean you don't have a business to grow, you absolutely do. But I'm gonna teach you how to grow a business that makes money even when you're not there working. So click the link down below, get your free consultation with my team, and let's really discover where you're at and how you can create it. We'll see you there.